Good evening and salutations, my YNR fans. You know, I gotta sit there and say, I really enjoyed this episode today. YNR, there's times it can either be really good or really bad or just boring. Well, I shouldn't sit there and say bad. I should just sit there and say it's either really good or really boring. And for the most part, this episode was actually really interesting. And let's start off with the whole Newmans and everything like that. Um, so Victoria gets everyone in the room, Nikki, um, Victor, Adam, and Nick. And she tells everyone the plan and talks about, you know, one of us has to sit there and take the fall, um, you know, in order to take down Ashley. And you know, she started looking at Adam, and Adam was like, yeah, okay. So, here's the thing. For the most part, Adam seemed to go along with the plan. But he wanted to sit there and make some alterations to the plan that um, Victoria had. And I'm like, bro, this isn't... <laughs> I'm like, bro, this isn't the time to try to leverage some sort of deal or whatever. You know, he was like, well, I want to be kept one as CEO. And even Victor was like, well, the thing is, they're not, they're not going to Tuscany. They're going to be here. So it doesn't make any sense for you to still be CEO. Um, but the way Adam, you know, the way his energy was, it was one of those things where it's like you felt like he was going to cause problems with this plan if he didn't get, you know, if he didn't get certain little um, things in exchange. And I'm like, bro, Ashlyn is everyone's problem, not just your problem. He is everyone's problem. But you took the time to sit there and, you know, carve out your little piece of the pie in this whole thing. And I'm like, Really? So he agrees. He leaves. And, you know, Victoria looks at, you know, Victor like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's on board. I don't, I don't think he's, uh, he's fully Team Newman. And, you know, Victor's like, listen, I'll back your plan. I'll make sure that, you know, I'll get him in line and, you know, we'll handle this. So Victoria leaves. And, you know, Nick at this point, he's like, yeah, he, he's not on board. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta talk to him. Now, Ashlyn is inside, you know, he's inside um, Adam's office. He's inside his computer. And, <clears throat> you know, during this whole time when everyone was having the meeting, the meeting, Adam was sitting there looking at his phone. And he was like, yep, he took the bait. He's in my computer. And, um, you know, Adam, you know, let him, let him in so he could sit there and plan events and stuff like that. Now, Michael Baldwin came in and Michael was like, all right, I got a way to sit there and get him out of the company if he violates a moral clause. So pretty much what they're counting on is Ashlyn to plant evidence on Adam to get him out, you know, something that's like very more wrong and stuff like that. This way they have grounds to fire him and get him away from the company. So Adam, you know, so um, Michael was there for a little bit and, you know, he laid out the plan as far as his part. And um, so, yeah, he put, you know, I guess he put the evidence in, um, well, he planted <laughs> evidence on Adam and uh, Victoria left. Nick went to go and try to find Adam. Now, Adam found Sally knocking at the door when Ashlyn was, you know, in his office. And, you know, Adam was like, you know, because he was there, she was sitting there knocking on the door. It's like, Adam, why is the door locked? And Ashlyn was like, oh. <laughs> um. But Adam was able to sit there and kind of convince her to, you know, like get away from the situation. 
So I think they want to go into society. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of actually proud of myself for remembering that name. They go to society, and Adam tells Sally about the meeting and the plan and everything like that. And, you know, Adam was like, well, you know, I did kind of leverage some stuff myself. Um, as far as, you know, um, you know, still being CEO and stuff like that. And when Sally was like, well, from what I understand, this whole plan kind of hinges on you. So at this point, you, you know, you got a lot of leverage. And I'm looking at this situation like, Sally, you are not helping what, I was like, Sally, you are not helping at all. You are literally amplifying Adam's worst impulses to a situation that needs the whole team to be on board. Um, and so when I sat there and looked at Sally Dude, I was like, partly, I was like, well, you know what? Listen, this is kind of typical Sally. I mean, I didn't watch Being Be that long, but I watched it long enough to know that you know, when she wants something, she doesn't really give a damn how she gets it. Um, and if that includes kidnapping Flo in order to sit there and get a man, that's what she's going to do. But anyway, so just looking at that scene, I was like, yep, yeah, it's Sally. Um, Nick came in and Nick was like, yo, I got to talk to you. And... Adam was like, yeah, no, Adam was like, yeah, you know, Sally knows everything, so we don't have to sit there and talk in private. And then Nick was like, yo, listen, I want to make sure that you're on board, because, you know, when you left, I wasn't exactly feeling your energy. You didn't really seem like you, you know, was going to be a team player in this whole thing. And, you know, Adam gets all smirky or whatever, like, well, you know, I said I was going to do it, and yada, yada, yada. Start giving his usual pushback. And at this point, you know, Nick <laughs> Nick literally says, you know, in not so many words that, yeah, I don't really trust you. But I trust the person that you're trying to become. You know, he talks about, I guess, this time where he helped Faith out. He gave Faith um, one of his kidneys. Um... You know, something that was very selfless, given Adam's history, he's not exactly known for, you know, heroics or things of that nature. But Nick was like, you know, I acknowledge, you know, the stuff that you tried to do to be a better person. And he was like, I'm hoping that I'm talking to that person, you know, that's going to sit there and help us out with this plan. Now, I'm not going to lie, I kind of butchered the... um the speech that he said, but it was actually good. <laughs> like the way he, you know, delivered those lines and just, uh, I guess just the speech that he used to sit there and try to appeal to Adam's better nature or the person that he is trying to become <laughs> was actually good. It was so good that when it was over, like, when he finished saying his speech or whatever, the episode was over, and I was like, wait, wait, uh, that's it? <laughs> I mean, 36 minutes actually flew by, and that's mostly because it dealt with, um, like, the Newman stuff with Ashlyn, and then, you know, Billy and Lily. And, I mean, not going to lie, it wasn't exactly the best part. I mean, it was... <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when he started in with the podcast, I was like, great, we're doing this podcast thing again. And, and granted, it wasn't even a bad subject. It, it was pretty much about, you know, love is blind and, you know, things of that nature. But when he started doing his podcast and he was telling the story about, you know, like how sometimes you see what you want to see and... You know, even when the truth is like staring you in the face, you, you know, you look at stuff with blinders on. When he was doing or recording on his phone for, I guess, a podcast or whatever, a lot of the stuff he was talking about, you know, was mostly about 
Victoria and Ashlyn. Now, Lily eventually came downstairs or she was walking downstairs and she stopped and she listened for a little bit before she made her presence known. And I'm sitting there looking at this whole thing where, you know, he's talking for a little bit and he stops. He stops and he turns around and she's like, oh, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And I'm like, well, it's not so much the interrupting part, but like, I don't know how to describe that scene. It's just kind of weird. It's like, I know she's not the type of person that wants to sit there and be like intrusive or like, you know, um, I don't want to sit there and say being nosy. But, you know, if somebody's sitting there talking on the phone or making a video, and you walk behind that person, you just kind of stand there for a minute, for, you know, a little bit just listening and just being like, it just comes across as kind of weird. And, you know, when he turned around, she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I mean, you're intruding. I was like, you're not intruding, but it's kind of odd. Like, the first time that she did that, I was like, all right, fine, whatever. He was just kind of talking into a void or whatever. But the second time was like, you, you should have kind of made your presence more known other than just kind of stand there for like a good 40 seconds. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It was like, no, you weren't interrupting, but I felt like you were kind of like eavesdropping a little bit. Like, I, I don't know. Anyway, she comes downstairs and, you know, after hearing you know, a little bit from his podcast or practice podcast or potential, whatever. She was like, does this have anything to do with the, you know, Victoria and Ashlyn stuff? And, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I guess I can't really put that out. And long story short, Lily's like, you know, this is after, you know, Billy tells her about you know, the fact that Victoria confided in him about the whole Ashton Lock thing and she has a plan or, um, yeah, he's worried. He's worried and she's keeping a lot of stuff close to the vest. And, you know, Lily sees that and Lily's like, listen, I get it. You know, you want to sit there and protect her and stuff like that, but, you know, she doesn't need rescue, you know? Um, I don't exactly remember what she said after that, but I think it was along the lines of, you know, I have some faith in her. Um, she doesn't need you to sit there and come in and rescue her. And, you know, at first Billy's like, well, you know, listen, just let you know, this doesn't have anything to do with, like, you know, we're not, you know, like, I'm not loving her or anything like that. This is about the kids. But I think the point she was trying to sit there and make was that, you know, Victoria has her family that's going to be behind her. She doesn't need you to sit there and be jumping into this battle that more or less doesn't concern you. Yeah, it concerns the kids, but <clears throat> you know, she looks at the situation like Victoria's smart. She's not going to let anything, you know, happen to her kids or, you know, stuff like that. So pretty much it's like just chill and let them handle it. Um... Now, at some point, Ashton runs into Michael Baldwin after, you know, the whole computer thing. Runs into Michael Baldwin. They have a couple of words. Um, it's, it's weird. It's like the way you were sitting there talking, it was like cold. Um, you know, Michael's like, oh, you know, I got arrested in Peru on like some trumped up charges. And, you know, they didn't stick, but. I'm going to sit there and find the person that was behind it. And I'm going to sit there and get them. Or, you know, something along the lines of that. Right? You know, something along the lines of talking directly to each other, but not actually saying, you know, it out loud. So anyway, they talk for a little bit. And, um, one second. Victoria runs into Ashland at um, Society. And the hell is that scene? <laughs> I've been up since like four o'clock in the morning and I was sitting there wondering, I was sitting there thinking like, you know, should I just do this review tomorrow? Because 
I don't actually have work, but I like to do my reviews um, the day of, you know. Anyway. Oh, that's what it was. So, Victoria was like, yeah, you know, I just kind of talking to my family and I have some news that you're not going to like. And so she tells him about, you know, the fact that, um, you know, Adam put himself in a position where he's still going to be acting CEO for a little bit, even though they're not going to Tuscany. So Ashlyn is clearly not happy about that. And, um, you know, Victoria plays the part of, well, you know, listen, this may be good for us because then he's going to be in a position, you know, like we know where he's at and we could sit there and dig up more proof to, you know, kind of like, you know, clear your name and stuff like that and um, all that other stuff. So I think Ashlyn says something along the lines of, well, you know, listen, I think I have a way to handle the whole Adam situation. And Victoria's like, well, what is it? I mean, I want to sit there and be able to counsel you. And, you know, I mean, this is kind of a team effort, you know. And, um, you know, Ashton's like, well, it's not really a trust issue, but it's like, he said it's like, it's one of those things where it's like he has to let an idea rattle in his head for a little bit before he's able to kind of, I guess, fully formulate it. And I looked at the situation, I looked at it and I was like, I want to see how Victoria's going to play it. And I felt like if Victoria would have kind of pushed to get more info, or as far as like, what is his plan, then it might have tipped them off. But she was like, you know what? She was like, fine. Well, whenever you know, you let me know. And I thought it was actually pretty smart. Because I feel like in, in, in those situations, sometimes they get so clouded or not really thinking rational, like, oh, well, I got to sit there and know what it is or try to control the situation that they would push. But the fact that she didn't do that, and she was like, all right, well, you know, I trust you. So, you know, when you know, I know. I sat there and I was like, I don't like you sometimes. And I do call you the Ice Princess for a reason. I felt like it was well played. Now, Nikki is still worried, um, worried about Victoria's emotional state, worrying about if she's going to be able to sit there and keep up the charade and how long she's going to be able to do that before she cracks. Because, you know, given, because, yeah, and she wasn't at there talking to them um, before she left as far as how she felt and, you know, the fact that Aslan kind of made her feel like a fool. And it was one point she was going to break down and start crying, but she kind of just held it together. So, you know, with that being said, you know, Vic, um, Vic, not Victor, Nikki was kind of worried, like, if she's going to blow her cover, because you can only sit there and look at somebody and, and fake smile for so long, knowing that you have so much animosity towards them because of what they've done to you. It's like, she's worried that she may not be able to keep up the charade. And, you know, Victor just kind of reassures, like, listen, I'm going to let her handle this. But if it gets dicey, I will step in. You know, like, he's like, I'm going to trust, you know, I'm going to trust our daughter. But, you know, you know, just to kind of reassure her. Um, and at first, I'm not going to lie, when I was sitting there watching it, and the fact that, like, in the beginning, I kind of took what Nikki was sitting there saying as, like, just complaining, like, what's the problem? You kind of got the whole team on board, and, you know, Victoria kind of, you know, really assured y'all that, yeah, she's hurt and angry and stuff like that, but it's her mess. She allowed this person to infiltrate the company and, you know, infiltrate their, their lives and everything like that, and she's like, I'm going to take responsibility. And I'm going to take care of it. So at first, I kind of took what Nikki was sitting there saying as like kind of complaining. But then I just, I was like, you know what? I did have a long day, but I kind of got to sit there and look at this from like the fact that she is a mother and she is concerned about her. And though, <laughs> uh, uh, although I don't really like her, I was sitting there trying to say something more like, 
elegant or whatever. But I was like, you know what, girls? Like, I'm like, even though I don't really like her that much, um, I do understand her concern for him. I mean, for for um, Victoria. And I was sitting there thinking about um, maybe a couple weeks ago, or maybe like even a month ago, give or take, that um. Victoria got like an attitude with um with Nikki. I think they were supposed to be doing some sort of meeting or whatever. And this is at a time period when Victoria was still blind to all the stuff that Ashton was doing and constantly um being on defensive. So I was also sitting there taking that to account, like, yo, you don't remember the wicked attitude that she was meant to giving you and everyone else on top of kicking her brother to the curb when all he was in there trying to do was help. So, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to sit there and take this as a mother's love, and I'm just going to let it go. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, so, yeah, I was in there thinking about doing it tomorrow or whatever when I was a little more well-rested. Well but the thing is, I usually like to... Um, watch the episode and then do a review afterwards because I'm still feeling the emotions from that episode, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. And I feel like that... I don't know. I just I like doing my reviews that way. And it's also a reason why there was a time period where I was kind of doing a, a lot of reviews. Well, pretty much all four of these. And I felt like I couldn't handle it. So I was like, you know what, let's maybe I'll just do the YNR reviews, you know, like I do all five, you know, all um like the whole week's worth in like on a Saturday. And I just felt like it just didn't have the same impact. So I was like, you know what, listen, even though I'm like super tired, I still have that feeling from when I watched the um episode. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. Um, and I feel like that's about it. So, yeah, no, it was actually a good episode. So, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I know that this review, now I'm sniffing the look and I'm like, mm, I don't know if this review is really that good compared to other reviews, but I got to sit there and trust my abilities at some point. So, even though I'm dead ass tired, I think I did a average review anyway with that being said i'm gonna go um i hope everyone has a great safe weekend be safe let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below and i will see you in the next video